Hi, I'm Niels, and that's Sir Walter. Let's go on an adventure. Hello and welcome to a new episode here on the Hard Life of Walter the Dog YouTube channel. Today we are going on a little hike across the Traun River to the city of Talheim, or specifically Talheim by Wells. We are starting our journey as usual here in Neustadt, north of the railroad tracks where we live and we are making our way now down to the river we are going on here on a sunday morning it is nice and quiet there's hardly anyone out yet perfect day to take the dogs out and most importantly out through the train station so today is our first time that we're actually going to show you that train station here in wells wells has quite a history when it comes to trains the first train that went through town occurred in 1835 when we had a horse-drawn train system that linked the city of gemunden which we visited in the last video with the city of Budweiser in what is modern day the Czech Republic. This was a train that primarily focused on the transport of people and salt, but the trains did not go through this train station. They actually went through the city itself. We are now making our way over towards the railroad bridge. So we are making our way up here in the elevator into the overpass over the railroad tracks. We are on what is called the Westbahn, which is the link between Vienna in the east and Salzburg on the west side of the country. They are currently working on actually expanding that track into a four lane or four track system. The city is extremely well located. We have trains that run over to Salzburg every 30 minutes, every 40 minutes. Some of them are very slow trains designed for commuters. Some of them are faster and take about an hour. We are about 20 minutes from 15 to 20 minutes from Linz and there's trains every 15 to 20 minutes. We obviously have the state rail but we also have Westbahn that comes through and we are one of the major stops which makes us extremely well connected and trains are quite full every day passing through. Now the building itself, I am not a big fan of this train station which is a relatively new build. It opened in 2005 and was part of the Austrian effort to modernize train stations and to me the train station looks just like a black box with some windows in it. It's To me it has very little character. Other people will look at it very differently and obviously we can quarrel about taste. The nice thing though is we have a very nice and smooth transition here. All the bus routes in the city itself touch on the train station either on the south or the north side. There are some local buses that leave from here from the space in front of the train station it is extraordinarily well connected on top of that There are some hotels, unlike the one here, the blue one in front of us, Bayerischer Hof. It stayed there my first two nights in the city, actually. It's a nice hotel, it actually has a good restaurant. Oddly enough, at least that's what the local says, it's one of the best fish restaurants in town. Why you would want to eat fish in Austria, I don't know. 
<laughs> but there we are. Oddity two is that the grocery store right in front of the train station is only open Monday through Friday. Why not open on at least Saturdays? Beats me. It seem would make a lot of sense considering the traffic on Saturdays and Sundays for tourists and visitors coming through to open it up at least a little bit considering Linz's train station has a bar as well which is open seven days a week we don't the weirdness of saying So we're now moving away from the train station and making our way further down toward the Trown River. At this stage we are about to cross one of those little canals that dates back to ancient times, I think Roman times even, that the Romans dug these, but they're certainly also having medieval evil carrot. It's a very nice little waterway, there are little rapids areas and it's a beautiful artery of fresh air in the city. Now I'm not giving you a garbage bin tour here, we're actually intentionally filming sort of our walking onto almost private property and giving you a better look of the canal and mailboxes. I'm actually doing this because there's a dog coming towards us and with two, two puppies it is not a pleasant situation to have that. But Walter decided to be really cute, so I thought this is extraordinary good to kind of leave this footage in. You do get a nice view of some of the eclectic nature of the housing stock. We're just east of the city center here. A lot of small private properties, some multifamily properties. But it's just amazing how you have like some of these older properties that date back to the middle of the last century and before and then some of these new builds like the one we're just passing here in its modern weird looks with sort of straight facades plastic coverings and so forth it's a bit of oddity now as we get closer to the town one thing you will probably start noticing is that um, the camera will switch back and forth i will switch shot sides of the road a few times because it is sunday morning and everyone is out with their dogs walking and we we usually our dogs are um, especially when they're close together occasionally like wanting to play making noises and we try to avoid that escalation there so here we are at the trown the river in town the trown is a branch to the Donau or Danube River in English. It is 153 kilometers long and it starts in the Alps of Austria, makes its way through what is known as the Salzkammergut, where the salt mines were located in ancient times and more medieval times, obviously through Gemunden and Traunsee, and then by way of Wells, it eventually reaches Linz and finally the Danube River. Because it has its origins up in the mountains and obviously is a river that comes down a long way it is ice cold it is great in the summer for cooling off we have not yet done that but we have seen quite a few people that decide to jump into it by this stage it's not some hottest of days you see it's overcast but the dogs still enjoyed getting a small dip here into the water there are a lot of ducks you see behind us there's some people feeding the ducks lucky for us the dogs our two remaining ones are fairly chill with that georgia would have been all over the place <laughs> seeing these ducks
At this stage, we are making our way towards the crossing because, again, our goal is today to go to Talheim on the other side. And very specifically, we have a destination. Last time we were over in Talheim, that was the Marienwarte. And this time around, we are intending to go to a church, a very beautiful old church that I visited last time. And, of course, now I decided that... I'm going to take the family to it. The crossing is what is known as Troda State. It is one of the few places where you can cross the Traun. There's also a car bridge and a railroad bridge with a pedestrian crossing. But this is a perfect location for pedestrians as well as bicyclists to cross between Wells and Talheim. This bridge is relatively new. It opened in 2004 and some consider it a beautiful piece of modern architecture. Mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> it, it definitely has seen better days. You can kind of see there's a bit of a rub off on the pavement here. It's a very metal bridge type thing. It, it's nice in that it gives you a nice connection. It's different in that it's not just a straight line across the river with a metal beam underneath it in the middle. So I guess in that regard, it is a beautiful item. Does it fit into this more historic landscape surrounding it? N not really. But then I get why people sometimes do that. So with that, we have now crossed the trail and we are in Talheim by Wells. Again, if you want to see some other aspects of the city, you can watch the previous video. I'll link that in the description to our visit to the Marienwarte. Talheim itself is a relatively small community of just over 5,000 people. It's a historic town, considering that a Roman road already cuts through this area in ancient times. So it is a beautiful town. It's on a hilly area you get a sort of sense here as we go up as i'm pushing my son up this incline it is incredible i wish i could have filmed this in some way that actually gives you a sense of the incline i'm pushing him up it it was hard work <laughs> it was really hard work getting him up there on that pavement and it's not getting better anytime soon here as you will see The sidewalk there was just ridiculous, so I just decided, considering it was Sunday, go in the road, don't even bother with it. At this stage, we are up at our destination, which is the Pfarrkirche Talheim by Wells. This is a Roman Catholic church, and we were there just as, actually, the religious service was about to start. The church itself is a work over a long time. There are indicators that dates the church back as far as the 1100s. Some early gravestones, for example, indicating activity, religious activities in the 1520s. And some of the church building itself is from the 1650s. The tower itself and some of the major building actually is from the 17 and 1800s. So it's it's been growing over time. As a Farkirche, of course, it is the seat for the local religious leadership. But besides this religious atonement that we have here and we can kind of nicely see some of this here as I'm walking around with the dogs, some of the gravestones, religious markers, the ch chancellor of the church here in the back, a very beautiful structure in many regards. It is also a place where pastor of the town, the priest lives. There are some services that are provided here. They even have a little restaurant. So a lot of little services, but then next door is a cemetery. And as we saw at the start of this video, there's also a monument to the casualties from this region who died in the First and Second World War. Obviously the First World War here 
Austria-Hungary, the Habsburg Empire being a major combatant, and then in the Second Second World War, after Austria is annexed by Germany, Austria will also send troops into that conflict, and the forces of Austria will fight in various locations, and the casualties are commemorated here. This is the only the casualties, obviously, of Talheim. Wells itself, and we'll see that in another video in the future, has its own commemorations with regard to the Second World War and First World War. This is the associated complex that you're seeing up there, some of the office spaces and so on. I did cut the, vi the sound from the video and there was a service going on at this stage. You could hear the organ going, you could hear singing and so on. So it was, it was a very tranquil and solemn experience being up there at this time. Quite a nice location in many regards, definitely worth seeing. Because of the service, obviously, we did not go inside. We'll have to go back and do a proper church tour at some point. At this stage, we decided how to go back. And since we had nothing else to do, we decided to go the long way through some residential areas here. And this is where I'm going to start to stop talking and let you just, let this just roll for the next uh, couple of minutes. The housing stock, again, is incredible. Some nice 1970s, 80s housing we have here. Some very modern, recent stuff what we have here. I'll let some Mozart play in the background now and let you enjoy this walk through a small Austrian community and...
For viewers who have watched some of our videos in the past, we just crossed here the Marienwart uh, trailhead and we are making our way down to the Traun again, to the Spar as a playground and so on, the place where we actually came up on. You get a second view here of the steep incline. And with that, I'm gonna sign off. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and leave us a comment, and we'll see you soon again with an adventure here on the hard life of Walter the Dog. YouTube channel.